In this video, we'll be taking apart the CMF Phone 1 by nothing. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. We'll start off by removing the SIM tray. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see an orange rubber gasket around the opening. Now there are four screws on the back cover which need to be removed. I'm not sure if they're supposed to provide you the screwdriver to remove these screws, since mine didn't come with it in the box. However, you can just use a standard flathead screwdriver to remove these screws. Now the bottom right one, which looks like a volume rocker, needs to be unscrewed as well. That can be unscrewed by hand. At this point, a pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. Here's a better look at the plastic back cover. Now there isn't really anything revolutionary about this design, as far as being able to take off the back cover goes, since there are already phones out there which don't even require removing any screws to remove the back cover. They're just held on with the catches around the back cover. One example would be the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. What is cool though, is that CMF or nothing provide you with documentation to 3D print your own back covers. So on this back cover, it basically tells you not to remove or replace the battery without authorization. And if you do, these two stickers on the bottom and top of this plastic cover will void your warranty. At this point, there are 12 Phillips screws which need to be removed, and two of which have tamper stickers over them. Again, another way for them to find out that you've tampered with the phone, which would void the warranty. Looking at the top plastic cover, we can see numerous antenna lines drawn, which are the light gray color lines. As for the glass camera lens covers, those can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you wouldn't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Looking at the other side, we see an area of graphite film top transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. As for the coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, and above that is the portrait sensor. This camera does not have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera and sensor cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here. There's a secondary microphone over here underneath the covered shield. There's some graphite film on the back of the front facing camera, as well as these shields to help transfer heat. There are also rubber gaskets around the connectors. And there's a liquid damage indicator sticker over here on the corner, which is that white sticker. Looking at the other side, we can see the proximity sensor on the top corner, a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, the 16 megapixel front facing camera, as well as a large amount of thermal paste on top of the graphite film, which is over the shield's top transfer heat. And this thermal paste seems to be of good quality. Once the removable shield cover has been removed, we see additional thermal paste on top of the processor. 
Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Now for them trying to make a phone with a removable cover, for the only reason being that it has a removable back cover, doesn't really make much sense. If they really want people to easily be able to take apart the phones, they really wouldn't hide any screws. However, on this phone there's a hidden screw underneath this cover, so you'll have to pry off this cover to gain access to it. Now that Phillips screw needs to be removed. So here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. There are also additional antenna lines drawn on the plastic portion, which are the light gray color lines. And there's additional graphite foam to help transfer heat. Looking at the other side, we can see the speaker itself. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the speaker opening. To remove the battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This is the 5000 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see these two flex cables which connect the main board to the subboard. The flex cable for the screen is located here, so if you needed to replace the screen, you would have to remove the back cover, as well as the screws in the bottom speaker assembly. You would then have to disconnect the flex cables over the subboard and remove the subboard itself, giving access to the screen cable, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You then pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. Taking a look at the subboard, we can see rubber gaskets around these connectors as well as the charger port and the primary microphones located underneath this covered shield. Now one thing I want to point out, whoever assembled this phone, pressed down on the flex cable from the main board to the subboard and connected it while squeezing or pushing the rubber gasket inside the connector itself. So if you can see this black portion inside the connector, it got pressed in with the connector, so I don't see how those contacts would make a connection with the flex cable or how the phone would function properly with the rubber gasket being pressed inside of the connector. It's not a major problem, but somewhat of a quality control issue. Before reassembling the phone, I'll remove that rubber gasket from inside the connector and clean it out. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. There's a small rubber gasket over here for the screen flex cable inside the opening in the frame, which you'll have to pull out and remove if you're planning on replacing the screen. The vibrator motor is located over here, which is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the fingerprint sensor above that. There are also two more liquid damage indicator stickers, one located over here on the frame, which is underneath the SIM reader, and another one over here on the frame which sits underneath the charger port. There's also an antenna board over here on the bottom corner, which the black coaxial cable connects to. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, as well as the flex cables, we see a copper heat pipe which runs underneath the battery, as well as the motherboard.
To replace the flex cable for the power button or volume keys, you have to gently peel off the flex cables from the frame. And finally, the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. Even though they have a removable back cover, the plastic cover over the motherboard, as well as the plastic cover on the speaker assembly, aren't as easy to remove as other phones, especially considering the hidden screw they have on the bottom speaker assembly. Also, the battery does have an adhesive pull pouch, but it's not the easiest pull pouch to use. Since the adhesive is still really strong and prying the battery off will take some time, that's why I didn't really give it a 2 out of 2 on the score chart. Aside from that, the phone is a decent phone for its price range and has decent cooling. I would have liked to have seen a vapor chamber on this, but at least it has a copper heat pipe. And it looks to be using a good quality thermal paste, as well as a good amount of it. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.